Hello and welcome to episode 6 of RetroMouse Unboxing. I didn't plan an unboxing video for this week, but sadly the PC I wanted to show had some makeups. Oh no. This is what I feared. That it would have like Windows XP on it or something. So that one will need some work. Let's start the unboxing. This little box holds something that I got as a gift for my birthday from Bianca. So this little PCB is a SCSI to SD, in this case version 5.2. This will come in very handy for my Macintosh collection since their SCSI hard drives have a tendency to die after 30 years or so of operating in an Apple system. I think my first try will be to see if I can mount it in one of my Macintosh LCs or in a Macintosh SE. As you might suspect this box comes from the same store as the SD to SCSI. A lot of stuff is hiding in this tiny box, starting with this ribbon cable and a power connector, two packing peanuts to keep the whole deal safe in transport. I guess the flyer is already revealing what we will find in the little pouch. This contains a grease weasel, version 4. The grease weasel can be used to hook up 3.5 inch, 5.25 inch and I believe even 8 inch disk drives to your PC or Mac. I want to see if I can expand my software library with this thing and maybe back up and archive my current collection. My biggest hope is that I can read some of my mystery 8 inch floppies that I have in my collection. Their labels state interesting stuff and I wonder if the files are still accessible. Next up is a piece of software I felt intrigued to get. This is an Apple service source. The service source of May 1994. The service source could be used for diagnosing and repairing faults in the hardware and software of Macintosh machines. But I think their job was mainly to train stuff. This disk came from someone who had a store selling Apple computers. In this folder you can see some of the requirements for the use of the disk. Relieved to see that the airbags in this box have survived. This is a Super Nintendo. I already have a Japanese one with a whole bunch of games, but I thought this could be a fun project for my new series I want to make, Console TLC. I'm working on the new intro that I will be posting on my website soon. When the first Console TLC will come out, I'm not sure, but I hope within a month or three. The Super Nintendo was untested, the seller said, but it looks very nice and hopefully only needs some retro bright to be looking original again. The seller of this one used some stems to send it. Don't see that too often nowadays. The star of the show is hiding in the plastic here, and the manual that gives away that in the plastic we will find the Sharp PC3000. Nice form factor pocket slash portable computer that I expect sadly we won't be seeing back since it is as dead as a doornail. But who knows? The seller left a small card in this box. Sorry for the old box, I had no other suitable packaging. She writes, literally translated from Dutch. How kind. The box didn't even look that old, uh, even seeing the contents managed to get to my door and touch. This is a Genius Scan GS4500. I stumbled upon one at my local thrift store, but sadly that one didn't come with the PCB that is needed to connect the scanner to your computer. This one does, so I'm looking forward to try it out with one of my PCs. At the moment I think my Laser286 will be the best suitable. This box is filled with cassette tapes, cassette tapes for a system I don't own yet. Side note, I own a PCB to build it, but that will be a great hassle I think. This is a game Cookie, and as you can see on the top of the packaging, this cassette can be used with the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. In this plastic bag are some more, starting with an introductory cassette, a cassette that claims that it can teach you how to use the microcomputer in one hour, Night Gunner, a shooter game for a 40k spectrum, and a horoscope based game slash piece of software, which is included two times I think. Predator, some demo games, a race game of some sort, Red Hawk with an interesting cover, Hunchback, Got to say that all these covers look quite nice, I bet that the gameplay will be totally different. This, uh -huh. 
This seems to be a standard music cassette. The tape inside seems to match the front cover. Here we have some more games. Most seem to be based around flying, like this flight simulator by Psyon Games. I really wonder what the gameplay will be like. More games hiding in this box. Fantasy Diamond, a graphical adventure. The glue holding the labels one has deteriorated. 1984 seems to be the year of release. I was especially intrigued by this game when I saw it in the ad. This is Schiphol Air Traffic Control. I can't imagine what the gameplay is going to be like and I expect that more versions have been made but covering different airports. Schiphol is the biggest airport of the Netherlands and quite close to my home. In this box we find some micro drives. On the picture they looked very big. I hadn't heard about this format yet so I thought like a retro amateur that they would be similar in size to a Commodore 64 cartridge. This is the introduction drive. Who knows, maybe I will be able to track down a computer with a drive so we can test them out. Here are some of the titles included. Next up this box with a very big ADR sign on the front. Let's hope there isn't a hazardous substance hiding in the box. This computer already made an appearance on the channel in my recent celebration of my 2 year anniversary. Two manuals were included that will be great use in finding out how it works. This is a Sharp PC1211 with docking station and a printer. Some of the prints of the previous owner were still in the carrying case. Next up, this big box that contains my second Macintosh SE FDHD. This is one of the devices that I can use with my new SD to SCSI. It doesn't work at the moment, but has a recap motherboard. Maybe there's something wrong with one of those caps. In this box, one of my interests that I haven't shown too often yet. This contains an IBM Info Window 2. It has an interesting bunch of inputs, like RJ11, I think for a keyboard, and that port looks like a PS2 port. On the back it has VGA Out and some other interesting ports. I have some more terminals that I want to show off, and a very cool piece of hardware that I can hook them up to pretty soon. Next up, something I really like and was very happy I managed to add it to my collection. This is a broken VIC-20 motherboard that will be fun to explore and see if we can make it work again. Yes, I'm on a streak when it comes to Commodore motherboards. Last week I opened a box containing 23 of them in various states of disrepair. This VIC board I like because it uses standard round DIMM plug. Next up is also said to be broken motherboard of a system that I'm very unfamiliar with. This is a plus 4 motherboard. Very interesting to see in real life and maybe to potentially troubleshoot and fix. I think it will be a challenge to find a keyboard for this one. It uses this funky power connector that looks a bit like the one used in the Amiga and the 128. Something on that in a minute. Let's back up these awesome pieces of motherboard art and move on to the next box. Got a whole bunch of bananas, even better, premium bananas. No, no better, this contains a tulip. This is a CGA monitor that I can use with the following system. Starting with this amazing tulip PC Compact 2 that it's on its way to become my favorite PC. I love the tiny form factor. Followed by something way bigger but in its own way amazing too. And that came with something very handy, the actual cable to be able to use the monitor. This is a Tulip PC Compact. No clue what the Compact means in this case, but an overall very cool computer that I still have to test and try out and see if it even works. Below these papers and plastic we find even more cassette tapes. Tapes in this case for my Commodore pad. Awesome label. Data PGM Claire, interesting. 
and a translating cassette. Oh, okay, this is a cassette for an Atari, cool. Hopefully after fixing the keyboard of my pad I will be able to load this software. This box is also pad related. Starting with this computes first book of PET, CBM. CBM of course for the European market, since the name PET was already owned by Philips. This book was released by Compute, also known for its very nice computer magazine. Very interesting book that will give more insight on how to use this awesome system. Also in the box, hiding in this plastic bag, Programming the PET slash CBM, a very detailed book on how to program for this system, written by Rato West. Next up I got this amazing handset phone. I always felt that I should enter nowadays is technology, so I got this state of the art phone with all kinds of functions. Oops no, I think people will give you money to get one of those phones these days. Let's remove this shredded paper and see See a manual for a Timex Sinclair 1000. A very nice and detailed manual, like we are used to see on vintage systems like these. So here's the actual computer, and like pocket computers, I'm shocked to see that people actually use this as a computer. It weighs almost nothing, and the keys seem to be more part of the case than actual keys to type on. Very cool. Let's see if we can find a power supply and some software to give it a try. Finishing with this envelope from Poland, I got this adapter that lets you hook up a Commodore 64 PSU to a plus and maybe a 128, but that I didn't research yet. Here you can see it connected to my aftermarket power supply. I would say that it's a perfect fit, and also a perfect last parcel for this episode of Rates on Mel's unboxing. Let me add some things to my YouTube to-do list. Um, add a SCSI to SD to one of my Macs, explore the Grease Weasel's capabilities, restore the Super Nintendo, scan some documents into my Laser 286, find a ZX Spectrum, use my Sharp PC1211, fix the FIG20, look at the PLOS4, fix the PET keyboard, take time to look at the Timex Sinclair 1000, Add the RM end screen to this video. Thanks for watching!